are we doing? Let's dive straight into this podcast. This is the Alex Gem Experience. And in this podcast, we're looking at our self-esteem, something that's probably the most important thing that we need to focus on. And it's something that oftentimes gets neglected for, for many different unusual reasons, but we won't divulge into that too much. So first part of this podcast, let's look at what self-esteem actually is. So essentially, it's an individual's evaluation of their own self worth. Okay, it determines the kind of the significant emotions that we experience on a daily basis. So it's pretty easy to understand what our self esteem is like, um, based upon the uh, kind of emotions that dictate your daily experience. So if you're someone who experience who feels quite apathetic, quite um, hopeless, if you're someone who feels depressed or signs of the the baby sister of depression being sadness if you experience sadness on a daily basis if you can't seem to get yourself going and take action on a daily basis if you have low energy on a continual basis then these are some signs and symptoms of uh, low self-esteem and we'll look at the symptoms a bit later on Uh, but at the moment so what is high self-esteem what is self-esteem and essentially you can supplant the term self-esteem of being self-loving so when you love who you are when you believe truly that you deserve to be happy that you deserve to be content that you deserve the things you wish to have in life that's when you can say that you have a high self-esteem so essentially the first thing i want to uncover is what self-esteem implies yes it's how we perceive ourselves Self-esteem is how we perceive ourselves, what we think about ourselves, really, to put it in a nutshell. So let's go into a bit more further depth as it relates to the symptoms of low self-esteem. So there is a strong correlation between people with um, mental health problems and people who have a low self-esteem. So I know that it's a, a very vague and in a huge term when you say uh, mental health problems, because mental health, you know, kind of relates to a whole host of different problems that people may have. Uh, being masochistic, being a sadist, you know, someone who um, suffers from schizophrenia, someone who um, is depressed, someone who has suicidal thoughts. Like these are all uh, rather severe signs of, of of having an extremely low self esteem. But you know the the self esteem spectrum is so vast and wide that you have people crossing all kinds of degrees. And you know the key thing that I want you to take from this podcast is firstly to understand where your self esteem is and to give you a. a a guideline as to how you can increase your own self-esteem. And we'll look at that nearer the end of this particular podcast. So symptoms of a low self-esteem, predominantly uh, any sign of a, a mental health issue uh, can pervade into uh, indicating low self-esteem. Actually, let me retract slightly because there's something else I wanted to really share with you guys as it relates to what is self-esteem. Because I think self-esteem is massively connected to our sense of identity. Okay, so self-esteem being closely aligned with our sense of identity. If we believe we have low self-esteem, what happens is, well, well, what is a belief? A a, a belief is a neuro pattern in the brain. All right. Um, When you come up with a belief, it's when um, a, a pattern, a thought pattern is wired and but also reconnected reaffirmed over time that's what a belief is a thought that has uh, been consolidated over time so a thought can become a belief essentially um so mental health problems being a key symptom of a poor self-esteem um like i alluded to it becomes a sense of our identity feeling hopeless feeling worthless uh, are signs that we may be struggling with our our, our self esteem um, not being able to change our situation not feeling in control feeling that we're going to be stuck we are stagnated feeling that um, there's no point 
in taking action. So uh, let's give some examples so we can start to connect with what I just said. So if you are single and you are looking at someone you desire and you think, oh, this person would not want to be with me. I mean, what do I have to offer? Then that's a sign of low self-esteem. OK, if you are someone who's, you know, not necessarily happy with your current position at your job or your work in your career. Um, and when you think about getting promoted, even though it might be something that you want, you think, I just don't have the skills and I'll never have the skills to kind of be able to fulfill that role. It's just not going to happen for me. I'm just going to do what I've been doing up until now. And I know I'm not necessarily happy and I know I want more in life, but it is what it is. You know, this is the hand that I've been dealt, so to speak. And these kind of thoughts indicate uh, low worth and despondency. So um, not feeling capable of changing your situation and also like in learning to enjoy your own misfortune. That kind of masochistic um, mentality can be uh, quite mean and damaging. Um, but it's, it's something that people do in a, a lot of different areas. So it's something we need to be vigilant of and careful with. So... Um, not learning to enjoy um, your own affliction. And, you know, people who do things like self-harm, and it doesn't have to be as severe as that, people who, um, you know, just don't really believe. Uh, they've, they've become so accustomed to not getting what they want that they have to kind of learn to enjoy their suffering and you know upon saying that now um joker comes to mind um the brilliant movie the brilliant rendition uh, by jacqueline phoenix fantastic movie i must say um and whilst watching that you, there are some key moments where uh and it was one of my favorite parts of the movie actually when uh, i forgot the uh, joker's actual real name in the movie i think it's arthur there we go he's come back to me uh, when Arthur's kind of sitting on his own and he's crying, but he, and his crying kind of meshes into his own laughter. And it's hard as a spectator to, to decipher, like, what's happening? Is he crying or is he laughing? And it's a masterful scene where we're left per absolutely perplexed and, and, and Joker himself, Arthur's absolutely perplexed as well as to how he feels. And it's the feeling of wanting to feel some kind of control or certainty and therefore enjoying your own uh, pain or, or, or sadness uh, as a way of trying to feel in control of your situation. Really sad stuff. Um, but people do it not as severe as the examples that I've been alluding to, but people do it in their own right in many different ways as well. Um, like even, for instance, it can be even as innocuous as, you know, having a certain sports team who's going for a really bad phase and you, you started to learn to enjoy them losing and, and to enjoy the like the managers of the players affliction and struggle sort of thing. Um, <laughs> quite disturbing stuff, but it happens in a whole host of different ways. Uh, so signs and symptoms of. Uh, poor self-esteem might also be antisocial behavior. Now, I'm certainly not um, advocating that, you know, people who are introverted necessarily struggle with low self-esteem. I, I don't believe that's true at all. Uh, but in saying that as well, people who um, can exhibit a, an enjoyment for being sociable and gregarious, and then all of a sudden or over time, they... they uh, learn to retreat and uh, prefer their own solitude and so on and so forth, that those can be signs of someone who um, is suffering with low self-esteem. Um, so if, essentially, I'll just paraphrase what I just said. Someone who uh, seemed at one time to be quite sociable, quite outgoing, um, enjoying mixing, meeting new people, going to different places, and then over time they just... Uh, wanted to be in their own shell, not really wanting to go out and so on and so forth. These are indicators that someone has uh, a lowered self-esteem. So, But however, if someone enjoys being on their own, if someone enjoys their own company, I think uh, if someone enjoys moments of silence and being on their own, I think that's a major strength. I think everyone in society should learn to enjoy their own company. Um, so, you know, if someone is introverted and loves their introvertedness, if that's even a worm, um, then 
then that's not necessarily a sign of someone having low self-esteem. In fact, it can be the opposite. So um, antisocial behaviour of some sorts, not being very um, thoughtful, I think that's a, low, a sign of low self-esteem. You know, someone who drops things and doesn't pick up after themselves, someone who's not thinking about another person who's about to uh, interact with whatever they've been doing in different ways. These are signs of uh, selfishness and therefore uh, low self-esteem because the more selfish we are, uh, the more si- more of a sign it is that we are depressed and, and selfish. You know, so people who are happy, loving, have an abundant mentality, these are people who t- actually tend to give and serve and share more with people in a multitude of different ways. So... um someone who exhibiting extreme uh, selfish signs. Um, and I believe being depressed is actually quite a selfish thing to do as well. Um, but we'll save that for another podcast for a different time. So putting yourself down in front of others um, can exhibit signs of a lowered self-esteem, even if it's, it seems to be frivolous and even if, if it seems to be a joke. Remember, behind every joke, there is uh, truth. Uh, so bear that in mind as well. Um, so we should practice not putting ourselves down at all, uh, whether internally or whether we are engaging with others. Never be self-deprecating. I, I appreciate being humble. Uh, but humbleness is also a sign that there is brilliance and, and a knowing of success. But it's almost as though you give that success to like God or Allah or greater power or, or you give it up to like your parents or an authority figure or a mentor, if that makes sense. Um, so extreme arrogance can be a sign of uh, lowered self-esteem uh, as well, because there's a big difference between um, arrogance and confidence. Confidence is a knowing of one's ability. Um, there's nothing wrong with being confident. And I think this is where people kind of go astray uh, and actually have low self-esteem because they don't want to appear arrogant over time. They're so respectful that their own respectfulness starts to work against them and they don't feel like they deserve to have that piece of pie, uh, quite literally, (laughs) um, in a group and stuff like that. And they they don't believe they deserve their fair share of things in in life, not just uh, on a minor scale such as in, you know, having a slice of cake um it, that can be uh, that can foreshadow them believing that they don't deserve a certain wealth or a certain partner or a certain kind of house or, or and so on and so forth but like i was saying um arrogance is something different um arrogance is uh, really wanting to force your own um ability upon others and whenever try- someone tries to force something it's a sign that it's not going their way and it's also a sign that they don't deserve what they really want well, that was quite deep. I like that. That's powerful. Um, so putting yourself down in front of others, um, not trying new things is another symptom, a sign of lowered self-esteem. So if you're someone who's learned to to enjoy the familiar and you want to stay within your comfort zone, and you don't want to break through, that can be a sign of low self-esteem, not feeling like you can get better. Uh, so essentially people with a fixed mindset uh, oftentimes suffer with uh, lowered self-esteem because they don't want to grow. They don't believe they can get much better in certain avenues within their lives and so on and so forth. Um, So the actual act of uh, wanting to always do the same things, wanting to stay within the uh, same mode, wanting to watch the same movies, wanting to watch the same TV shows, not wanting to go to holidays in different locations and sticking to what is known. Um, These are people who... I mean, I can see, I can understand why they are that way. They want to stay comfortable. They, if they know something works, then why try something new? But over time, if you always do what's familiar, um, then your then your circle of possibility, metaphorically speaking, um, becomes smaller and smaller over time. And you do fewer and fewer things. And the less you do, the more inert you become. Uh, consequentially results in um, lowered self-esteem. So you want to have a growth mindset. You want to push yourself. You want to believe that you can get better in certain avenues. Um, low uh, Signs of low self-esteem. Maybe excessively comparing yourself with others. 
uh, indulging in jealousy uh, and envy um, on a daily basis are often signs of a lowered self-esteem. Um, we should, you know, ideally, we should all pr- predominantly wanting to be just comparing ourselves with our former selves. We should be looking to become newer renditions of ourselves every couple of years, really. I know that personally, I've tra- changed tremendously Um and I'm literally live a completely different lifestyle to the way I was living three, four, five years ago, like tremendously different. Um, I know that I've changed um, my career path massively. Like um, I, I was suffering from low self-esteem maybe like six, seven years ago in particular, um, where I felt kind of stuck in my job as a, as a teacher. You know, there were ups and downs in the profession. Um I didn't feel like I was progressing in the profession as quickly as I wanted to, but also I was setting unrealistic standards, to be fair. Um, you know, I didn't have other sources of income. Um, I was I didn't love what I was doing for a living. I liked it, um, but there were oftentimes a lot of um, monotony involved, like with the marking, going to meetings and these sorts of things um, that I didn't necessarily enjoy. Um so uh, I certainly went through a time of having like low self esteem uh, because over time, you, it, you, like I said earlier, it becomes a, a fixed part of your personality. Like if you do things a certain way, then over time you begin to associate it with, with, with who you are, your identity, and then it becomes an automatic response. It becomes an, an automatic uh, program, mentally speaking. And when you program yourself like that a certain way, you live in the past and you think, you know what, things aren't going to get better for me. This is the way things are. Just get used to it. Like uh, that can be really damaging. And it's definitely, definitely a sign of a lowered self-esteem. Um, so where was I? What? So what leads to poor self-esteem, really? Uh, so we've looked at what self-esteem is. We looked at the symptoms and signs of a lowered self-esteem. Um and really, to be fair, just going back a touch about looking at the symptoms of self-esteem in terms of physically, you know, closed body language, people who walk around like kind of hunched over are often signs of like metaphorically, it's like they've been carrying a burden on their backs uh, their entire lives. Um, and this is kind of exemplified in Join's, Join? <laughs> John Steinbeck's um, novella of Mice and Men. Uh, which was based in 1930s during the Great Depression, and there was severe sexism, severe racism, uh, severe discrimination, and you know it was a very difficult time for uh, most people, uh, financially speaking as well, and the implications that has on the household too. Um, and there's a particular character, the only black character in the in the novella, Crooks, um, who's you know suffers from um, racism. He's learned over time to enjoy his isolation um, and whenever someone does come to, to give him some attention he kind of tells them to go away because it's his own coping mechanism anyway um, the main reason why I bring him up is because uh, he was actually in the novella kicked by um, a dong uh, uh, a horse I believe uh, which is why he became crippled in the novella but also um, he has a crooked back and that's a metaphor for the heavy discrimination he's had to carry and bear his entire life because he was black. Um, so uh, I've just thought that was a nice little segue, a nice example there. Um, so people who uh, walk a certain way, people who hold themselves a certain way, people who are quite hesitant and timid in their movements uh, often show signs of um, fright uh, and fear. Nice use of fricatives, alliteration there. Fright and fear. There you go, guys. What else do you want in a podcast, eh? Um, So chronic stress are key signs of people um, exhibiting low self-esteem. It leads to low self-esteem. And unfortunately, like most people in our society, live in chronic stress 70% of the time. So... You can infer from the statistic that I just shared with you that if that's the case, then really most people suffer with some kind of low self-esteem, not necessarily an extreme self-esteem issue, but some form of self-esteem, not believing that they deserve what they really want, 
not deep down believing it at least maybe they try to convince themselves that they um deserve happiness that they deserve a great partner that they deserve quality relationships um uh, they could be just saying it to try and boost themselves but the, you can't uh, outdo your unconscious your unconscious runs the show it's just too powerful um but however in saying that like affirmations and incantations over time can play a role in uh, helping you to change your beliefs and thus your your subconscious programming over time you know a habit takes between 66 days to 365 days to be ingrained in the unconscious so um you can work on your beliefs and and I'll share uh, some examples later on in this podcast as to how you can start to improve your self esteem so chronic stress, uh, which means, what do I mean by chronic stress? Like, it's natural for animals and people to experience stress for, for, for brief moments in their lives. Um, even if it's literally for a few fleeting moments a day. Um, but unfortunately, many people have, are experts at programming themselves to live this way. So they live in chronic stress. Um, and they find it hard to switch off because it's become... Uh, attached to their identity, their personality, their their unconscious as well. So what leads to poor self-esteem? You can say that, uh, you know, if people have have been bullied or abused in their lives or suffered abuse in in, in a whole host of different ways, you know, like emotional abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, uh, this feeling discriminated against, being bullied verbally, physically, and so on and so forth. Uh, these are all uh, conducive factors that result in people feeling uh, a lowered self-esteem. Uh, so problems at work, you know, if you have issues within the workplace in your career and so on and so forth, then that can over time, um, because let's let's think about it this way. Most people spend, you know, almost two thirds of most days at work yeah your your usual you know eight to four or nine to five job or ten to six whatever it may be whatever your shift is you know that's a large portion of your waking day um spent at work um so and you know when you're at work really uh referring to your brainwave states here you're in beta so beta brainwave state is associated with uh, having your critical mind switched on, you know, uh, when you're far more judgmental, evaluative, analytical. Um, like I'm being beta, I'm in beta right now whilst I'm talking to you. It's when you're, you have the most frequent thoughts per minute. It's when you're critical and you're, there is a high cognitive workload taking place because you're thinking about a whole host of different things at the same sort of time. Um, and you know, it's all right for me to be in beta now because, you know, I'm comfortable and I love what I'm doing with you talking to you right now. Uh, whereas if you're in beta, so when you're being highly judgmental, evaluative, reflective, and so on and so forth, constantly thinking about different things, how people are perceiving you and your reputation, all these sorts of things. Um, and you're at work and work and during work hours, you feel like you're behind, you're not keeping up, you're not doing your job well enough. You know, your maybe your line manager or your peers don't don't think highly of you. They they don't they, they think you're letting them down in a certain project or something like this. Um, you begin to link that with beta, and even when you're not at work, over time, say it could be the weekend, and during week hours, during work hours, sorry, on the weekend when you're not at work and you're at home chilling or whatever you're doing. Um, you might feel stressed out for no reason. You don't understand why. And it's because you've programmed your yourself to feel um, fearful or stressed out or anxious um, during those particular hours. It's what you've conditioned over time. Um, so if you've got problems at work, if because we tend to associate um, our worth with how we do at work in our jobs or careers, Uh, And that over time can lead to a lowered self-esteem as well. Uh, Like I alluded to uh, near the start of the podcast about people with mental health problems, if that's uh, exacerbated or worsened over time, then that's a clear sign of a lowered self-esteem as well. If you're someone who struggles with sleeping and you're an insomniac, uh, that can be signs of a lowered self-esteem as well. 
Um, because why do people suffer from insomnia? Well, there could be many different reasons why people suffer from insomnia, but it might primarily be um, because uh, they are fearful and they cannot relax, they cannot switch off uh, and so on and so forth. So bear that in mind as well. What else? So addictions, addictions play a massive role here. Um, like people have all sorts of different addictions and obsessions. I think ev everyone is addicted to something. Uh, you could be addicted to religion. You could be addicted to work. You could be addicted to a person. You could be addicted to betting and gambling. You could be addicted to, to uh, an unhealthy diet. You could be addicted to eating. You could be addicted to drinking. You could be ad uh, addicted to licit or illicit drugs. Um, you could be you could be addicted to going to the gym. You could be addicted with being peaceful. Do you know what I mean? Like everyone has addictions. Um, however, signs of a lowered self esteem is having bad addictions. Um, I don't. Um, it's a bit harsh me saying this, but it's true at the end of the day because um, if people smoke cigarettes, for instance, and they know how damaging that is to one's health, you know people. Most adults understand that how unhealthy and damaging it is internally um, to be a smoker. Yet if you still continue to smoke, knowing that it's bad, they're going to deteriorate your health over time, um, then that can be seen as a sign of, uh, of uh, a lowered self-esteem. So bad addictions, you know, constantly needing to drink to change your state um, is often a sign of someone who is unhappy with their normal state. So essentially, lowered self-esteem can be linked to people looking to instantly change their states, whether it be through eating to change their state to make them feel, because the actual act of eating uh, like delicious foods or even junk foods for that matter, um, it has been shown to, to uh, was it, is it, I think it's dopamine, to increase dopamine, uh, even if it's briefly. Um, so people want to quickly change their state by eating unhealthy processed uh, refined food, uh, drinking, having alcohol to just change their state um, for whatever reason, that's often a sign of uh, a lowered self-esteem. Um, addictions to, or oh, addictions to most unhealthy things, to be honest, can be linked to bad self-esteem. Uh, being harsh to oneself, being quite mean and disparaging to yourself, uh, wanting to bully others, being mean to others for no reason is a classic sign of someone who has low self-esteem because bullies are often bullied, right? And, you know, people who are rude or mean are often people who are un unhappy with their own situation, right? So if someone is bullying and I put like a colleague or a peer um or anyone for that matter, then that's often a sign of someone uh, wanting uh, to to feel in control, to feel strong and significant uh, by picking on someone who's vulnerable. Um, you know, people who pick on the, those who are vulnerable, people who like uh, paedophiles can be seen as having incredibly low self-esteem because they want to uh, have control over people and often people who are young, innocent, who can't really uh, think like they can um so people who look to uh abuse or have some kind of control over others are often signs of people who have low self esteem like in a uh in a relationship if a person is uh, really overly controlling and domineering of their partner um that's often a sign that they fear that they can they're going to lose their person that they're losing control so extreme forms of control uh, can be linked to a low self-esteem because deep down that, that person believes that they're going to lose the other person. Uh, so that can be linked to a poor self-esteem. Uh, people who have relationship problems in general, not necessarily romantic uh, relationship problems, but you know problems with their uh, siblings, problems with their parents, problems with their carers, problems with... Um, uh, anyone who's deemed to be, who should be deemed to be close to them, for example. Uh, so people who are going through relationship issues on a continual basis, or if it's something quite severe, that can often be linked to poor self-esteem. 
Um, because what is self-esteem? If you have poor self is it possible for someone to have really low self-esteem yet be really happy? No, it's not possible. You can't be one and yet the other. Like if you have high self-esteem, then you are likely to be a happy person. Um, and, you know, there were studies that have been uh, conducted and uh, there's a brilliant TED talk out there that, about the key to happiness. And, and what they outlined is that, um, you know, the one true factor that ascertains how happy someone is in their lives is actually the quality of their relationships. So feeling like you can confide to someone, feeling like you can be yourself around people, feeling like you are have unconditional love, that you are accepted, that you are adored, that people love you, um, building quality, trusting relationships over time are actually is actually the number one sign of someone being happy in their lives. So if you're someone who is having a lot of relationship issues with people around you, um, and that can be a sign of someone with lowered self-esteem, um, because there's a, because because let's be honest, if there's a problem in a relationship, it's usually a two way issue, right? Um, now don't get me wrong. Um, I'm not I'm not necessarily saying that the the person in that relationship is completely uh, irresponsible. Like if there is a problem in a relationship, then two people. Might be to varying degrees, but still, nonetheless, those two people involved in the relationship have played a role in making sure that relationship is damaged. Yeah, you know, in one form or another. So, if you are together and and uh, you know you you got into a romantic relationship, for example, and throughout the process of the d- dating process, you were thinking, well, this person is good in good in these kind of ways, and you know. They have a big flaw that I don't really like, but I can change them over time. I'm sure I can change them and make them a bit more this sort of way. Um, And then over years of trying to change them and trying to make them exactly what they wanted uh, and not being successful in that avenue, um, then if there are some glaring problems, uh, like drama, conflict, arguments in in the relationship, um, then really, even though the problem might not have been with that, that person uh, is still their fault for wanting to change someone else, for example. So that's just a little scenario in which someone who seems to not be at fault uh, had played a role because they wanted to change someone in that instance. Um, there can be all kinds of relationships in problems. Um, so if But if there are some significant problems in a relationship, then it's often a sign of uh, lowered self-esteem because we need to do what we can to either rectify the relationship or simply move away. We should never be involved in a toxic relationship. If you are someone who is accepting a toxic relationship where you just aren't happy, where the negatives outweigh the positives and you are still in that relationship, then it's often a sign of lowered self-esteem because you don't believe that you deserve someone better suited to you. You don't deserve that you should be happy and that you are maybe like staying in the relationship for the kid's sake and stuff like that. Um, Then that's often a sign of lowered self-esteem because we should always be looking to experience happiness, joy, um, satisfaction, contentment, and so on and so forth. Uh, We should never, ever in any situation accept uh, a a relationship that's more negative than positive. So if if you are encountering some kind of relationship problems with like uh, siblings, peers, colleagues, and so on and so forth, um, then it's one of two. It's really simple. It's really, really simple, guys. We either... uh, do something to resolve the situation by like having a proper one-to-one chat with them to kind of clear the air and to move forward. Or you just end the connection, you end the link, you do not engage or interact with this person in any form or capacity, right? It's as simple as that. Someone who is constantly going back and forth, lots of drama, lots of arguments, splitting up, getting back together, then splitting up again, get back together. Like um, These are often signs of... Um, Poor self-esteem. Wow, we went into one on that one, didn't we? Um, so having a bad childhood, having a bad bad childhood, feeling like you've encountered some traumatic experience in your lives uh, can relate to poor self-esteem if you uh, 
feel incapable of changing your circumstance. So if you've experienced trauma, if you are living in the past, basically if, if a past event has substantial uh, emotional control over you, then you are living in the past and therefore you are living in low self-esteem. Okay, I'll repeat that again. If you are someone who is still really negatively impacted by a past event or a past trigger, um, then it's often a sign that you are unable to change your life. And I'm going to guess this person has been uh, living the same kind of life for probably a long time. Um, we should um, constantly push forward. There, there should never be a strong uh, connection to a negative past event because we should be constantly envisioning a better future, changing our lifestyle, changing our habits, doing new things, experiencing new thoughts, emotions, uh, challenging ourselves in different ways. And, you know, if you if you have encountered a really difficult uh, traumatic experience, um, then really you should look to someone who has high self-esteem, who encountered really painful uh, like childhood experiences, for instance, they should use that to their advantage to make sure people either don't suffer from that in, in the future or that they are, help others who have been unable to kind of escape from the shackles of their own trauma. Um, because there are some really wonderful people out there who are who have massively high self-esteem, but people who are like disabled or disfigured in certain different ways, in certain different ways, what's silly saying that is. Um, but if, if if someone had, had, you know, was abused of some sort or another, then and they in the future want to prevent others from experiencing that same kind of trauma or pain, uh, then that's often a sign of someone who's, who has been able to change their self-esteem for the better. So if someone is constantly excusing themselves, justifying why they are unable to improve their situation, constantly saying, well, I had a messed up childhood or I was beaten up as a kid or I was abused as a child or something like that, um, even though it's incredibly sad and I do empathise, but at the same time, living in the past is just not going to help you. Let's be honest. Um, people who have like body image issues... Um, often suffer from uh, poor self-esteem, people who are constantly thinking about how they look, their appearance, uh, it's easily associated to a lowered self-esteem. Now, that doesn't mean don't look after yourself and that people who are like obese or in un unhealthy shape are necessarily have good self-esteem. In fact, it could very well be in the opposite. But at the same time, you want some form of balance in that avenue because you don't want to be someone up who, you know, has to go to the gym twice every single day in order to stay in shape. People who are constantly looking in the mirror, trying to look perfect, trying to look gorgeous in, in a whole host of ways. It should not be something that dominates a large proportion of your day. Um, yes, stay in good shape, stay strong, stay healthy, stay feeling empowered, feel sexy. These are wonderful things. But if you are constantly looking in the mirror, if you constantly feel like you're never enough, if you constantly feel like you are unaccepted, and that you aren't beautiful enough internally or externally, then that's often a sign of um, lowered self-esteem. Um, if you are someone who has like financial issues, financial problems, that's often a sign of uh, lowered self-esteem as well. And you know the main culprit, the main reason why people get divorced, um, is usually linked to some kind of uh, money problems. So you know financial issues do over time. Um, lead to a worsened self-esteem. Um, it's true. So now that we've looked at what self-esteem is, being self-loving, that is, now that we've looked at some symptoms and signs of lowered self-esteem, and now that we've looked at what leads to a worsened and lowered self-esteem, uh, it's, it's time to do the positives and start to look at what we can do to become, uh, to to enhance our self-esteem okay and the very first thing that i think we must address in order to become uh, to have a, a higher self-esteem is to become more disciplined 
I think there is a strong, very strong correlation between discipline and strong self-esteem. Um, because the last thing you want to do is be someone who breaks your own promises, who says to themselves, you know, I'm going to start my diet today, I'm going to start eating healthily today, and then if you don't do it, like you've just broke your own promise. That means you can't trust yourself. If you can't trust yourself, then you, have, you don't love yourself. So the more disciplined we become, like within reason, like let's not get crazy. Um, but by and large, the more disciplined we become in our lives, um, the higher our self-esteem becomes. And we don't accept nonsense from others and we don't accept being belittled or disparaged by other people because we have strong self-esteem. And that can be developed by becoming more disciplined. So what do I mean by more disciplined? Well, discipline by its very nature is quite a, a vague term. Um, but I'll give you some examples. So someone who spends a large portion of their day doing things that are important, such as working on their wealth, working on their health, working on improving their relationships with uh, clients, with um, uh, their spouse, with their children, and so on and so forth. The, these are signs of someone who has great self-esteem. Whereas someone who looks to self-sabotage, someone who procrastinates all the time, someone who comes up with reasons why they aren't getting ahead in life, uh, are oftentimes uh, often signs of people with lowered self-esteem. So becoming disciplined, um, you know, making time every single day for what's important to you. Um, you know, some exa other examples of being disciplined is waking up at a certain time every single day and doing uh, important things quite early on in the day. Or it can be if you're a nighttime person, then making sure that you're doing these important things uh, later on, in, like in the evening or the night. As long as you are very disciplined, like if you are someone who values their health, then going to the gym and exercising most days, um, it conveys discipline and it conveys that you are looking after yourself, that you value your health, your energy levels, your mood and so on and so forth. Um, so how else can we increase our self-esteem? Well, by experiencing new things. Wanting to experience new, wanting to go on new diverse holidays, reading novel, new books, learning new things, listening to new podcasts, uh, visiting new different restaurants, uh, watching new movies and so on and so forth. These are all things that incrementally build up um, leading to uh, a better self-esteem. So wanting to learn new things, because when you learn new things, it stimulates what I've spoke about before about stimulating uh, neuroplasticity and therefore stimulating neurogenesis. Neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to rewire and restructure itself. And you can do that by developing new skills, experiencing new things and so on and so forth. Um, and over time, that enables you to kind of come up with stronger, more supportive beliefs. And it enables you to kind of eradicate and eliminate any negative past experiences and, and past beliefs and to kind of let go of those traumatizing events that, that I touched upon earlier. Um, so um, experiencing new things, wanting to challenge yourself, having that growth mindset, you can increase your self-esteem by challenging yourself more. So if you want to take a moment to think about what you've been wanting to do in your life recently, but for one reason you've kind of been putting off or, or moving away from then now is a great time to really, really do something to move toward improving in that area and to challenge yourself, to challenge your brain, to challenge your mind, to challenge your spirit, even to challenge your body, whatever it might be. Learn to challenge yourself. Push your comfort zone. Push out of your comfort zone. Because the more you challenge yourself and step outside of your comfort zone, well, what happens is what was once uncomfortable will become comfortable and therefore it will broaden your comfort zone and then you just keep challenging yourself more and more you keep learning you keep growing you keep doing new things you keep changing your beliefs you you learn that oh my god i can't i can't believe i'm able to do this this used to be something that i never thought i'd be able to experience and that leads to an improved self-esteem and improved uh, feelings of self-worth so challenge yourself um like eradicating limiting beliefs is something we can work on in order to 
uh, develop our self-esteem. So how can we get rid of our limiting beliefs that haunt us, that hold us in place, that oppress us? Uh, Meditation, mindfulness plays a great role in that. Being able to think and embrace silence and reflect upon your life realistically. Um, Setting goals, moving to having a vision, a compelling vision for your life, living a captivating lifestyle. These are things that we can do that over time will uh, alleviate or eliminate our um, limiting beliefs as well. Uh, Being loved by others. And accepting love from others and not feeling like you have to do things um, to kind of compensate. Because you don't want your relationships to turn into like a business transaction. You don't want it to be like, oh, you gave me something. You gave me a pen, so I need to give you a pen back. That's not what love is. Uh, Love is not tracking how much you do for someone. I'll repeat that again because that was quite nice. Love is not tracking what you do for someone if you ever think to yourself i went out with this person i bought them drinks they now know, they now need to buy me drinks then you don't have love in this relationship you have a, uh, a business relationship it functions like a business because if you think about it, what happens in a business well i give you a product or service and you give me money in return or support in return do you know what i mean that is a business transaction whereas genuine love unconditional love is not caring about what the other person does for you you just keep giving giving because that's all you have for that person and you know it can be hard to attain it's going to need some reciprocity to keep it going because there's only so much abuse you can put up with. If someone's not giving you anything to work with and you're constantly giving back to them, um, that again actually goes back to what I said earlier about staying in a toxic relationship that's unsupportive and unhealthy. Um, You do deserve people to be loving towards you. You do deserve people to accept you uh, as you are. And the more you can be yourself in front of others, the the more it's a sign of uh, great self-esteem and great self-worth. Uh, get used to being yourself in front of more and more people, guys, because that will make sure that you um, that you feel like you are more than enough just the way you are. And that's what self-esteem is, right? So changing your beliefs, you know, it's good to love yourself rather than thinking it's something that's wrong or bad because we live in a society that's been taught to be respectful to be polite to exhibit the right social etiquettes and so on and so forth and and to a a degree i i I appreciate that but in saying that as well a lot of people i see who become too respectful too nice too polite too sweet that they have no backbone and they don't say what they want and they don't go for what they want because they fear how others will perceive them. And that is incredibly damaging and detrimental to one's health over time. Being happy is about going for what makes you happy. Being happy is about telling others what makes you happy. Showing what makes you happy. And not accepting anything other than what you believe you should experience. And we'll end this podcast on that note. Beautiful stuff. All right, guys, if you don't follow me yet on on, on YouTube, just type in Alex Gem. Follow me, uh, all three of my channels, if you wish, or or whatever kind of things you're into most. Follow me on that particular channel. Uh, Subscribe, click the notifications button so you get all my latest updates. Uh, You can find me on Facebook, Alex Gem. You can find my Facebook pages. If you want to improve your physical shape, uh, the Six Pack Mind is one of my Facebook pages. Instant Attraction, helping people, in particular men, to to meet the love of their lives, if that's what they wish. Um, So Instant Attraction IA is my Facebook page for that area. Um, If you're someone who wants to improve the quality of their lives, their energy, their health, become more successful, increase their wealth, increase their health, and so on and so forth, then that's Power Happiness Success. That's PHS. That's my uh, my Facebook page for that area. 
Um, you can also find me on Instagram, guys. Check me out. Um, Alex Gem underscore body, if you want to transform your physical shape. Alex Gem underscore dating, if you want help and support with your dating game. Um, Alex Gem underscore power, if you want to feel more empowered, happier, develop your self esteem, become stronger, become the best version of yourself. Follow me on that particular page as well. Uh, check out my website, guys. Uh, www.alexgem.com you can check out my store www.alexgemstore.com as well unbelievable products and services there you can get my books at that store you can get my books at amazon as well um i've got some incredible courses that you can and, and my masterminds that you can learn more about at my website which i gave you previously uh, just check out my material constantly look to grow constantly look to better yourself guys and i cannot wait to work with you i will see you soon take care